Lake Champlain is a natural freshwater lake in North America, located mainly within the borders of the United States but partially situated across the Canada-United States border in the Canadian province of Quebec. The New York portion of the Champlain Valley includes the eastern portions of Clinton County and Essex County. Most of this area is a part of the Adirondack Park. There are recreational opportunities in the park and along the relatively undeveloped coastline of Lake Champlain. The cities of Plattsburgh, New York and Burlington, Vermont are on the western east shores of the lake, respectively, and the village of Ticonderoga, New York is located in the southern part of the region. The Quebec portion is located in the regional county municipalities of Lower Richelieu and Bromissisquoi. There are a number of islands in the lake. The largest include the towns of South Hero, Grand Isle, North Hero, Albra, and Isle La Motte, all belonging to Grand Isle County in the state of Vermont. Geology the Champlain Valley is the northernmost unit of a landform system known as the Great Appalachian Valley, which stretches from Quebec to Alabama. The Champlain Valley is a physiographic section of the larger St. Lawrence Valley, which in turn is part of the larger Appalachian Physiographic Division. It is one of numerous large lakes located in an arc from Labrador through the northern United States and into the Northwest Territories of Canada, although it is smaller than each of the Great Lakes. Ontario, Erie, Huron, Superior, or Michigan, Lake Champlain is a large body of fresh water, approximately 1,269 square kilometers in area. The lake is roughly 201 kilometers long and 23 kilometers across at its widest point. The maximum depth is approximately 400 feet. The lake varies seasonally from about 95 to 100 feet above mean sea level. Hydrology Lake Champlain is situated in the Lake Champlain Valley between the Green Mountains of Vermont and the Adirondack Mountains of New York, drained northward by the 106-mile-long Richelieu River into the St. Lawrence River at Sorrel Tracy, Quebec northeast and downstream of Montreal. It also receives the waters from the 32-mile-long Lake George, so its basin collects waters from the northwestern slopes of the Green Mountains of Vermont and the northernmost eastern peaks of the Adirondack Mountains of New York. The lake drains nearly half of Vermont. About 250,000 people get their drinking water from the lake. The lake is fed by Otter Creek, the Winooski, Poultney, Missisquoi, and Lamoy rivers in Vermont, and the Ozabal, Chazy, Bouquet, Saranac, and La Chute rivers in New York. It is connected to the Hudson River by the Champlain Canal. Portions of the lake freeze each winter, and in some winters the entire lake surface freezes, referred to as closing. The lake temperature reaches an average of 70 degrees Fahrenheit in July and August. Chazy Reef The Chazy Reef is an extensive Ordovician carbonate rock formation which extends from Tennessee to Quebec and Newfoundland. It occurs in prominent outcropping at Goodsell Ridge, Isle La Motte, the northernmost island in Lake Champlain. The oldest reef so around the head of the south end of the island, slightly younger reefs are found at the Fisk Quarry, and the youngest are located in fields to the north. Together, these three sites provide a unique narrative of events which took place over 450 million years ago in the ocean in the Southern Hemisphere, long before the emergence of Lake Champlain 20,000 years ago. History the lake was named after the French explorer Samuel de Champlain, who encountered it in 1609, while the ports of Burlington, Vermont, Port Henry, New York, and Plattsburgh, New York today are primarily used by small craft, ferries and lake cruise ships. They were of substantial commercial and military importance in the 18th and 19th centuries. A variety of Native American names for the lake were recorded by historians. Many historical works give Cania Dairy Garanter as the Iroquois name for the lake. The lake was an important northern gateway to their lands. A number of other sources give Petenbo, because the Abenaki name in their Algonquin language for the lake, the saint. 
Francis, Soka Kiabanaki Band, who make their home along the massive Skiwebe River in northwestern Vermont, call the lake Bitorbigok, which has the same meaning as Pettenboek. Some early 21st century articles appear during the Champlain Quadricentennial claiming Ondekina as the local native name for the lake, but none cites a verifiable source. Colonial America and the Revolutionary War New France allocated concessions all along Lake Champlain to French settlers, and built forts to defend the waterways. In colonial times, Lake Champlain was used as a water passage between the St. Lawrence and the Hudson Valleys. Travelers found it easier to journey by boats and sledges on the lake rather than to go overland on the unpaved and frequently mud-bound roads of the time. The northern tip of the lake at St. John sur richelieu Quebec is a short distance from Montreal. The southern tip at Whitehall is a short distance from Saratoga, Glens Falls, and Albany, New York. Forts were built at Ticonderoga and Crown Point to control passage on the lake in colonial times. Important battles were fought at Ticonderoga in 1758 and 1775. During the Revolutionary War, the British and Americans conducted a frenetic shipbuilding race through the spring and summer of 1776 at opposite ends of the lake fighting a significant naval engagement on October 11 at the Battle of Valkyr Island. While it was a tactical defeat for the Americans and the small fleet led by Benedict Arnold was almost entirely destroyed, the Americans gained a strategic victory. The British invasion was delayed long enough so that the approach of winter prevented the fall of these forts until the following year. In this period, the Continental Army gained strength and was victorious at Saratoga. War of 1812 During the War of 1812, British and American forces faced each other in the Battle of Lake Champlain, also known as the Battle of Plattsburgh, fought on September 11, 1814. This ended the final British invasion of the northern states during the War of 1812. It was fought just prior to the signing of the Treaty of Ghent, and the American victory denied the British any leverage to demand exclusive control over the Great Lakes or territorial gains against the new England states. Three U.S. naval ships have been named after this battle, including the US Lake Champlain, the US Lake Champlain, and a cargo ship used during World War I. Following the War of 1812, the U.S. Army began construction on Fort Blunder, an unnamed fortification built at the northernmost end of Lake Champlain to protect against attacks from British Canada. Its nickname came from a surveying error. The initial phase of construction on the fort turned out to be taking place on a point 75 miles north of the Canadian border. Once this error was spotted, construction was abandoned. Locals scavenged materials used in the abandoned fort for use in their own homes and public buildings. By the Webster-Ashburton Treaty of 1842, the U.S.-Canadian border was adjusted northward to include the strategically important site of Fort Blunder on the U.S. side. In 1844, work was begun to replace the remains of the 1812-era fort with a massive new third-system masonry fortification known as Fort Montgomery. Portions of this fort are still standing. Modern history In the early 19th century, the construction of the Champlain Canal connected Lake Champlain to the Hudson River system, allowing north-south commerce by water from New York City to Montreal and Atlantic Canada. In 1909, 65,000 people celebrated the 300th anniversary of the French discovery of the lake. Attending dignitaries included President William Howard Taft, along with representatives from France, Canada and the United Kingdom. In 1929, then-New York Governor Franklin Roosevelt and Vermont Governor John Weeks dedicated the first bridge to span the lake. Built from Crown Point to Chimney Point, this bridge lasted until December 2009. Severe deterioration was found, and the bridge was demolished and replaced with the Lake Champlain Bridge which opened in November 2011. On February 19, 1932, boats were able to sail on Lake Champlain.
It was the first time that the lake was known to be free of ice during the winter at that time. Lake Champlain briefly became the nation's sixth great lake on March 6, 1998, when President Clinton signed Senate Bill 927. This bill, which was led by U.S. Senator Patrick Leahy of Vermont and reauthorized the National Sea Grant Program, contained a line declaring Lake Champlain to be a great lake. This status enabled its neighboring states to apply for additional federal research and education funds allocated to these national resources. Following a small uproar, the Great Lakes status was rescinded on March 24. Champ, Lake Champlain Monster In 1609 Samuel de Champlain wrote that he saw a lake monster five feet long, as thick as a man's thigh, with silver-gray scales a dagger could not penetrate. The alleged monster had 2.5-foot jaws with sharp and dangerous teeth. Native Americans claimed to have seen similar monsters 8 to 10 feet. This mysterious creature is likely the original Lake Champlain monster. The monster has been memorialized in sports teams' names and mascots. The Vermont Lake Monsters and mascot of the state's minor league baseball team. A Vermont Historical Society publication recounts the story and offers possible explanations for accounts of the so-called monster. Floating logs, schools of large sturgeons diving in a row, or flocks of blackbirds flying close to the water, ecology, a pollution prevention. Control and restoration plan for Lake Champlain was first endorsed in October 1996 by the governors of New York and Vermont, and the regional administrators of the United States Environmental Protection Agency. In April 2003, the plan was updated and Quebec signed on to it. The plan is being implemented by the Lake Champlain Basin Program and its partners at the state, provincial, federal and local level. It is renowned as a model for interstate and international cooperation. Its primary goals are to reduce phosphorus inputs to Lake Champlain, reduce toxic contamination, minimize the risks to humans from water-related health hazards, and control the introduction, spread, and impact of non-native nuisance species to preserve the integrity of the Lake Champlain ecosystem. Agricultural and urban runoff from the watershed or drainage basin is the primary source of excess phosphorus which exacerbates algae blooms in Lake Champlain. The most problematic blooms have been cyanobacteria, commonly called blue-green algae, in the northeastern part of the lake, primarily Missisquoi Bay. To reduce phosphorus runoff to this part of the lake, Vermont and Quebec agreed to reduce their inputs by 60% and 40%, respectively by an agreement signed in 2002. While agricultural sources are the primary sources of phosphorus in the Missisquoi Basin, runoff from developed land in suburbs is estimated to contribute about 46% of the phosphorus runoff basin-wide to Lake Champlain, and agricultural lands contributed about 38%. In 2002, the cleanup plan noted that the lake had the capacity to absorb 110 metric tons of phosphorus each year. In 2009, a judge noted that 218 metric tons were still flowing in annually, more than twice what the lake could handle. 60 municipal and industrial sewage plants discharged processed waste from the Vermont side. In 2008, the EPA expressed concerns to the state of Vermont that the lake's cleanup was not progressing fast enough to meet the original cleanup goal of 2016. The state, however, cites its Clean and Clear Action Plan as a model that will produce positive results for Lake Champlain. In 2007, Vermont banned phosphates for dishwasher use starting in 2010. This will prevent an estimated 2 to 3 short tons from flowing into the lake. While this represents 0.6% of the phosphate pollution, it took $1.9 million to remove the pollutant from treated wastewater, an EPA requirement. Despite concerns about pollution, Lake Champlain is safe for swimming, fishing, and boating. It is considered a world-class fishery for salmonide species and base. 
About 81 fish species live in the lake, and more than 300 bird species rely on it for habitat and as a resource during migrations. By 2008 at least six institutions were monitoring lake water health. In 2002 the Conservation Law Foundation appointed a lake keeper who reviews the state's pollution controls. Friends of Missisquoi Bay was formed in 2003. The Lake Champlain Committee, Vermont Water Resources Board hired a water quality expert in 2008 to write water quality standards and create wetland protection rules. In 2007 the Vermont Agency of Natural Resources appoints a Lake Czar to oversee pollution control. Clean and Clear, an agency of the Vermont state government established in 2004, and the Nature Conservancy, a non-profit group, focuses on biodiversity and ecosystem health. In 2001, scientists estimated that farming contributed 38% of the phosphorus runoff. By 2010, results of environmentally conscious farming practices, enforced by law, had made any positive contribution to lake cleanliness. A federally funded study was started to analyze this problem and to arrive at a solution. Biologists have been trying to control lampreys in the lake since 1985 or earlier. Lampreys are native to the area but have expanded in population to such an extent that they wounded nearly all lake trout in 2006 and 70 to 80 percent of salmon. The use of pesticides against the lamprey has reduced their casualties of other fish to 35 percent of salmon and 31 percent of lake trout. The goal was 15 percent of salmon and 25 percent of lake trout. The federal and state governments originally budgeted $18 million for lake programs for 2010. This was later supplemented by an additional $6.5 million from the federal government. Railroad historically four significant railroad crossings were built over the lake. As of 2011, only one remains. The floating rail trestle from Larrabee's Point, Vermont to Ticonderoga, New York was operated by the Addison branch of the Rutland Railroad. It was abandoned in 1918 due to a number of accidents which resulted in locomotives and rail cars falling into the lake. The Island Line Causeway this marble rock landfill causeway stretched from Colchester, Vermont three miles north and west to South Hero, Vermont. Two breaks in the causeway were spanned by a fixed iron trestle and a swing bridge that could be opened to allow boats to pass. Rutland Railroad operated trains over this causeway from 1901 to 1961. The railway was officially abandoned in 1963, with tracks and trestles removed over the course of the ten years that followed. The marble causeway still remains, as does the fixed iron trestle that bridges the lesser of the two gaps. The swing bridge over the navigation channel was removed sometime in the early 1970s. Now called Colchester Park, the main three-mile causeway has been adapted and preserved as a recreation area for cyclists, runners, and anglers. Two smaller marble rock landfill causeways were also erected as part of this line that connected Grand Isle to North Hero, Vermont and from North Hero to Albra. The Albra, Vermont, Rouses Point, New York Rail Trestle. From sometime in the late 19th century until 1964, this wooden trestle carried two railroads over the lake just south of the U.S. Two Vehicular Bridge. The iron swing bridge at the center has been removed. Most of the wooden pilings remain and can easily be seen looking south from the U.S. Two Bridge. Part of the trestle on the Rouses Point side has been converted for use as an access pier associated with the local marina. The Swanton, Albra, Vermont Rail Trestle, built in the same manner as at Rouses Point, it crosses the lake just south of Missisquoi Bay and the Canadian border, within yards south of the Vermont Route 78 bridge. It is still in use by the New England Central Railroad. Natural History in 2010, the estimate of cormorant population, now classified as a nuisance species because they take so much of the lake fish, ranged from 14,000 to 16,000. 
a Fish and Wildlife Commissioner said that the ideal population would be 3,300 or about 3 per 1 square kilometre. Cormorants had disappeared from the lake due to the use of DDT in the 1940s and 1950s, which made their eggs more fragile and reduced breeding populations. Ring-billed gulls are also considered a nuisance. Measures have been taken to reduce their population. Authorities are trying to encourage the return of black crown night herons, cattle egrets, and great blue herons, which disappeared during the time DDT was being widely used.